Hello guys, welcome to Raising Reef. I'm Rob Shaw and in today's video I'm going to be looking at the new macro algae I've added to my refugium, Calerpa, and three techniques I'm going to be using in order to stop it turning sexual and causing problems within my reef system. So you may be wondering why run macroalgae at all and the answer to that is water quality. Macroalgae will absorb nitrogen based compounds out of the water such as ammonia helping to boost up your biological filtration and they also absorb phosphates out of the water and they will outcompete nuisance algae within your display tank and help to keep it looking a lot cleaner. There are lots of different macroalgae you can use in order to do this job for you in a refugium. I'm using Calerpa now, I was using Chetomorpha previously. The reason I've switched them out is because I believe Calerpa looks a lot nicer and as I'm running a display refugium, uh, it lends itself a lot better to that. There are three different types of Calerpa readily available within the hobby. You will find a fern type, a grape type, and the type that I've got here, which is a grass type. This just corresponds to the form that it takes when it grows. Other than that, they operate quite the same. Calerpa is interesting in the fact that it only has one cell with many nuclei, making it among the largest cells in any organism on Earth. This means that it reproduces in a very specific way, and this can cause concern. There are, however, some things that you can put in place to reduce any risk. There are two ways in which Calerpa reproduces. One is fragmentation, which is where rough seas may churn up and tear off pieces of the plant, or a predator may be eating it and parts may float off and create new colonies in a new location. We don't need to worry about this, it's perfectly natural, but the other way it reproduces is sporulation, or what's commonly known in the hobby as going sexual. The algae produces reproductive cells within its body fluid, and when there are enough of them, the algae basically self-destructs and releases all of these spores out into the water column. What's left behind is a rotting husk of an algae plant, which is now going to start to pollute the water. And in turn, the cells that have been released will also start to die off and degrade water quality even further. But there are three things that you can do in order to minimize the risk of this and to help keep it growing healthy in your refugium. The number one is prune it regularly. The more you prune it, the more it will grow. It seems like the denser it gets, the more likely it is to turn sexual. So if you keep it pruned down regularly on a say a every two weeks to every month you shouldn't encounter too much of a problem. The second technique that you can use is to break the plant up into small clumps. It would seem that it turns sexual one clump at a time and if a clump turns sexual you can just remove what's left of that clump out and the rest will continue to grow. So the smaller the clumps the less the impact of any sporulation event. Third and final thing that you can do is you can light it 24 seven. I'm not entirely sure about why this helps, but I would imagine that the more time spent photosynthesizing and growing, the less time there is for the plant to produce these reproductive cells, which will trigger a sporulation event. So by pruning it back regularly, tearing the plant up into smaller clumps and lighting it 24 seven, you shouldn't encounter a problem. This won't 100% guarantee that your plant never turns sexual, but as I said, if it turns one clump at a time and it's a small event, it will have a small impact on your reef tank. And by following these three techniques, you should be able to run Calerpa safe in the knowledge that if a sporulation event happens within your aquarium, it will be minimized to the least risk and easily dealt with. If a sporulation event does happen within your reef system, you will need to remove as much of the dead algae that's left as possible. And if it has clouded the water with these spores, doing a water change or running a power filter will help to clear the water. If you do this in a timely manner, there's no reason for any ill effects to the rest of your livestock within your aquarium, and there should be no need to panic. 
Spotting the algae turning sexual before a sporulation event can be key to stopping this from happening at all. And in a display refugium, if you observe the plants, you'll be able to see it happening. What is normally nice smooth leaf structures will start to grow hairs or even look like it's got like a bobbly fungus growing on it. This is an indication that it's going to turn sexual and release spores into the water and you can simply just remove that section of the plant away and you have averted a sporulation event. This is obviously easier in a display refugium where you can see the macroalgae easily. If you have it confined within a section of your sump out of sight, this may be harder to spot. But by pruning it regularly and keeping those clumps small, any event that does happen will be minimal. So I hope you enjoyed this video on Clerpa, and if you decide to use it in your refugium, you now know three techniques you can use in order to minimize the risk. So give this video a thumbs up, share it with someone you may think will enjoy it, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already, take it easy guys, and I'll see you in the next video.